that, that is a lot safer. <laughs> okay, uh, this is probably going to be a fairly long video. So first things first, let's talk about a, the alignment and the greasing that we did and the double checking of the bolts. I just took this thing on a four hour drive, two hours there, two hours back. Thing is great. No more bouncing around like crazy and the thing's riding straight, really feels good. Now, why did it get out of alignment? Well, I was talking to my friend John and I was picking his brain about front ends because they're very complicated and alignments. He does a laser alignment, he has a machine. And what he was saying was is that he, he was asking me how soon I did that alignment after I changed the suspension. And I said, oh, less than 500 miles. I mean, probably 200 miles. And he said, sometimes those, those suspensions take a while to settle in. And you put a brand new spring on, it could take a while for it to settle in and really get to its right height. And the shock too, I mean, you know, it works out and then it's not like it was brand new. And the suspension reacts to that and it just settles into it, whatever alignment it's going to be and then you're supposed to align it. And that is really interesting because I did the alignment very, very soon after. And there's a possibility that I aligned it and then, then the suspension settled in and, right? Now, it's, he mentioned that it's, you know, it's obviously different with a solid front axle as opposed to like a car with like a racing suspension, right? Uh, but he, he said there's a possibility too with these. He doesn't, he's not familiar with the Thorin system and, and on this truck, but he said it's something to think about. And it was a good point. So it's possible that I didn't wait long enough for the car to really just kind of settle in and then do the alignment. So that's something to know for the future. Now, the next thing is, is that the bouncing around that was happening, I was thinking to myself, just last night, right, that there's a real possibility that the bouncing around was due to there being no grease in that sway bar from Thorin. Um, not that it didn't come greased, but I had to get it, you know, the grease, you know, wore out and then I had to refill it. Like it, you, you use it and it squeezes out of the seams and everything and then you got to grease it again. And if you remember on this side, when the truck was pointing this way on the driver's side, I had to do one full and at least a half on one of those Zerks. That's a lot of grease for such a small little tiny area. If it's not greased, there's a lot of room in there and it can move around and you know what those things do. I mean, when one side goes up, this one, the, this, this thorn one, is, makes it so that it absorbs that and it doesn't bounce on this side as opposed to the OEM one, which when you bounce like this, you go flying all, because it's like a second solid axle. That's how ridiculous that thing is. You, I mean, you need a cherry picker to pick one of those things up if you take it off the truck. So it's, it's um, that thing is, locks both the sides together. So that's why you feel it. And that's why this Thorn one really helps a lot of people out. But I gotta tell you, you gotta keep this thing greased. So in this video, we are definitely gonna get all those zerks back into shape. And we're gonna get, remember I flip flop that side so I couldn't get to those zerks. And we're gonna flip that this way and we're gonna make sure all the zerks are good. Um, and you know, we are gonna be on top of this thing now. I mean, once a month, I'm gonna take a look at it. So, all right. Now, why did I drive two hours somewhere and two hours back? Well, I got a toolbox. Uh, so we're gonna get this toolbox out of here by myself. Welcome, welcome to my life. Whoever invented ratchet straps, they deserve an award. The highest award that can be given. One of those ones that the president has to give you. you put your head down and they put you, put a little metal around your neck. Thank you for the ratchet strap. Tilt it like this. 
Okay. This is this this is smart. I mean it's not as smart as the ratchet strap, but this is smart. This thing is gonna hit me in the nuts, bro. Oh, look at this. Oh baby! Okay, it's a couple days later, I ordered a set of Zerks. These are just all different sizes and straight ones and 45s and 90s. We're going to be using this. Obviously I got the truck pulled in front first here. We're going to swap out this end link and uh, you know what I'll do? I'll, I'm going to put up a picture of the directions because I had to look them up. I want to double check the the foot pounds on these end links. I know it was high. It's a hundred. I'm going to put up the full set of directions right here. This is an easy thing to install. It really is very easy. Um, taking off the, o the, the, the OEM one is, is, is really the harder part. It's also easy, but it's harder than putting this on. And if you don't have a torque, if you don't have a torque wrench, yeah, it's a little bit, um, you know, it's not, you just crank it down as much as you possibly can with a long ratchet. Don't try and use like, you know, one of these things to do a hundred foot pounds. It's not gonna happen. I don't care who you are. <laughs> this right here, getting 100 foot-pounds on this is very, very difficult. Now, if you put a bar on it, yeah, you'll be able to do it. But just like this, one of these little 10-inch ones, it's not going to work out. You definitely need one of these long ones like this to get 100 foot-pounds. Uh, or uh, a breaker bar would probably be smarter. But we're going to use an actual torque wrench that's bigger than that. Wow. Look at all the salt. That's crazy. Let's clean these off. Just look at all the salt just dropping. All right, yeah, so 19. Well, this is a good test. Let's let's get these I let's get this icon out of here. This is a really good test. This is an icon. You know, the, the one with the ratchet on this side, this is a 12 point, and this is the one with the grip. I don't know if you could see it or not, but it's got a little grippy thing on it. We're going to, we're going to use this to hold. Remember, I talked these two uh, to a hundred. Yeah, okay. I love creepers, but you know, laying some cardboard down is a good is a good way to you know, not get dirty. But you know what it also is? If you're laying on cold concrete, it's it's a hell of a lot warmer. It's it's insulation. It's got those air pockets. It's way warmer. Lay on cardboard, not concrete. If it's cold out, if it's warm, lay on concrete. down on this freaking thing. Oh, there it is. I got it now. Let's use the flex, and let's use the 12 point. We don't have much room here. We're getting three clicks. That's it. Well, these wrenches surprising me here. I mean, not this flex one, because it really should be able to do it. But the 12 point, 
Yeah, this is good. All right, let's take out these zerks and while it's out, it makes it a little bit simpler. We can even grease it while it's here. Okay. And clearly you can see that, uh, well, yeah, I guess technically speaking, it's not the same. Like this side versus this side is different, but that shouldn't matter. But it is different. I mean, it's clearly different. It's different by an eighth inch. Well, I, I have to say, this is a good point. It is different by an eighth inch. That should really be on the inside. All right, hey, you know what I mean? Look, I, uh, and I made a mistake. I, I own up to it, but we're gonna fix it. Okay, so this one's no good. Well, look at that. Oh, look at that baby. Everything's in here. Oh, they put them in little bags. Well, that's nice. So, now, what in the world? How does this work? This must be like this. Right? Straight. 45. Okay, good. This is the one that I got, 245 pieces, see that? And it was pretty cheap, it was like 25 bucks. So I believe, I'm just taking a guess here because I haven't checked this, I believe we need an M8. So this is an M10, this is an M8 right here. So let's, let's check this. No, no, that is not an M8. That was a weird, that was weird how, how it wasn't even close. Maybe they're, maybe they're using, maybe they're using a quarter inch. That seems like it might be it. Yeah, that's it. So it's a, it's a, it's not metric. It's SAE. All right. Hey. What the hell? It's a brand new, brand new Zerk here. if it's the threads are too long like it's it's too deep I bet you that's what's going on here so if this is a problem I just unscrewed it a hair still not going There it goes. So the threads are too deep. You believe this nonsense? So I'm not even gonna let go of this thing because it's probably hot as hell. Well, it went in, that's, that's nice. Pretty easy. So I didn't touch the threads at all. Okay, so that's in there. Let's see what happens. Yep. All right, so that did, that did it. Just had to take off that little bit. Ugh. 
So we can put this back on and we'll have to do that to one more uh, Zerk, meaning we're going to have to, you know, just uh, just hit it on the grinder a little bit and we should be all right. All right, this is how it should be going on. I mean, I just have it loose on here right now, but um, and I put some Permatex on the ends of these bolts, but the Zerks need to be obviously pointing towards the front of the car and in this particular case, this should be pointing up, I think, because if they were pointing down, this would be in the way right here. See that? So we'll get the torque wrench on here, 100 foot pounds, which shouldn't be that hard because I'm using a real long torque wrench because of the 250, so it's a long one. And we'll also use that icon again and see if we can use it to hold the nut to torque to 100. Now, technically speaking, the friction is going to be holding a lot of the torque, but the icon will get it to, you know, to lock up, which will be nice. All right, so let's, I'll set you up over here. So I'm using one of these dial ones. If you've never seen one of these, that's, it's a, it's a dial torque. You, you dial in the torque. And this is just a Husky. The Husky was, I, I guess they are just, either getting rid of torque wrenches, like they're not gonna do torque wrenches anymore, or they're coming out with a new model because this one was like 125 bucks or something. And they had them all on clearance. I don't know, maybe six months ago or a year ago or something like that when I was at Home Depot, it was like 50 bucks. I was like, uh, yeah, I'll take that. 50 bucks is a good deal. Oh, what am I doing? I wonder that was so easy. It was like never tightening them. <laughs> it's because I had the, the ratchet, the icon ratchet on the wrong way, going the wrong way. All right, so let's, we can just lower that down. You want to go slow here, because once it hits its torque, you don't want to over torque it. There it is. And we'll just do it one more time to double check it. That's good. There it is. And we'll go up and double check it. There it is. Okay. So torque to 100. Hey. Give me back my wrench. All right, if you remember from that last video, this was the one that I put the bad one back in. So I just replaced this one. I ground this one down. But you gotta be careful grinding these down because uh, I, I actually ground the, you know, I, I tried one and I ground it down too far. And what can happen is, is that the spring and the ball can come. Let me show you actually. So here's the spring, here's the ball. Here's the one that I ground down too far. See how that big hole is there? I'll look at it right on this side. It might not seem like it, but that is is just a bit smaller. There it is. That, that that'll show you. If you ground it down too, if you ground it, ground it down too much, the spring and that ball comes out. The ball is right there, right? And when you grease it, it pushes that ball in and and compresses the spring. And then when you when you stop, the spring pushes it back. Right, one last thing I was just thinking about here is that these are the new ones that I bought, and this is one of the old ones that was bad. Uh, I took out the caliper because I'm saying to myself, why did I have to grind that thing down? Was it too long? Or what was really going on there? Well, let's mic this. We got 13 and a half. Right. And look at that. 13 and a half. The same size. So what what the heck's going on? Well, it's that socket. That's what's happening right there. If you look, since 
the socket on the old ones are bigger, it's less threads. But since the socket on the, the new one is smaller, they had to put more threads, right? Makes sense, and that's why it's screwing in too far and bottoming out. Well, that's interesting, right? It's the same length. They're both 13 and a half mils, but it's the size of this socket that's screwing everything up. Probably normally that wouldn't matter, but on that specific end link there from Thorin, it, um, it's got to be a, a certain size. I wonder... I wonder if there's like a shallow, a shallow, <laughs> shallow, uh, shallow zerk or something. Maybe that's like a specification or something like that. I mean, it's only like a millimeter and a half. All right, we got this end link flipped around and we're all greased up. This was a screw up, this, this end link. I don't think it was a bad screw up. I don't really think it was affecting anything, but it definitely is an eighth inch longer on one side. It's a standoff basically, so there's no binding. The, the longer side's got to be on the inside. That's it. Uh, I screwed that up. I didn't do a video on this. This is the first thing I ever did on the truck. I didn't know really how crazy. I didn't know I was going to do bumpers and winch and uh, solar and a camper and all this great camper. I didn't know I was going to do any of that stuff. Um, so I didn't film it. I should have, though, because I would have got it right if I, if I would have filmed it. Um, I definitely, because I would have been explaining it. And I would have said, oh, geez, this has got to go this way. Um, so yeah, we're good now and I'm going to keep my eyes on these Zerks. I really am, um, because I, I really believe the bouncing around was due to this stuff being, this thing not being greased. It makes complete sense. So this thing is going to be greased up all the time. And that's it. So we're going to wrap up this video. I got a ton more videos to go on the Ram and we still got the Sierra. I got a video coming out very soon on the Sierra. Maybe the next one will be the Sierra or the one after that. I'm not really sure. But we got, got tons of stuff going on with the Ram. So if you're interested in that, subscribe. All right, see ya.